So whenever you're ready. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining our first employer workshop uh, hosted by Suffolk County Department of Labor. Um, we want to start off with uh, in giving people a little more information about um, the benefits of hiring youth. And we thought it'd be really helpful to have some labor laws and then some employers that have successfully done so in the past. So I want to start by introducing Commissioner Rosalie Drago, um, Department of Labor Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Diana and Michelle, for setting this up today. And thank you for all of our employers that are joining us as well as, as our speakers. So I like, I'm sure that our team is tired of hearing me say this, but I've been working since I'm 14 years old. And I think that a lot of the skills I have today are a result of working with you know, I read customers since the time I was 14, um, whether it was waiting tables, delivering pizza, being a counselor, working in a cookie factory, you know, I had a, an own oh, stop and shop, or was it shop right? So I think youth employment is critical to building the kind of workplace skills that employers are looking for in the adult population. Um, this is also at this point in time, for whatever reason, there are a lot of youth who need to work and so we have with us today a representation of some great employers that represent the spectrum of kinds of places you could be working. So Frank Bono is uh, owner at Primi Italian Steakhouse. I think a couple of other restaurants as well. As you can see from his background is a very high end and fabulous looking restaurant and he employs youth. We have Christy Bosco from Splish Splash. I, if you live on Long Island, you have to have been at Splish Splash at some point in your life. Um, and uh, they employ hundreds and hundreds of youth for the summer. We also have Dan Weir from YMCA of Long Island. I uh, mentioned to, when we were getting ready for the call that my kids attended camp at the Y. And it was some of the best trained uh, youth workers I have seen that could both uh, be really responsible with children and also really good communicators with adults. And we also have from the State Department of Labor, Robin Felrath and Angela Dean, who will talk through our labor laws after we hear a little bit from employers. And we have Ray and Carol from Eastern Suffolk BOCES. So uh, a quick overview note for you. This, the state as well as federal government identify youth uh, when it comes to training programs in two categories, 14 to 17 and 18 to 24. So we have funding to provide some customer service training or tailored training that could meet your employer needs if we want to recruit youth from any specific geographic area. And then we can do some pre-training and we can even do some uh, a, a little bit of support in uh, the first couple of weeks of an internship with you. So inviting you to this conversation today, I'm going to ask our wonderful business panelists three questions. Why should employers consider hiring youth? And what do you, what do you like about having youth work in your facility? How is it beneficial to your, to your company? Second, I'm going to ask a bit about training. And third, what roles you hire for. So I'm going to start off with um, our friends at Splish Splash. If Kristen, you want to talk a little bit about um, what roles you hire for and why you uh, like hiring youth, we could start with you. Um, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so we hire um, a number of positions here, uh, starting all the way down to the age of 14. Um, depending on the type of roles. So uh, anyone who's 14 years of age uh, can get a job in our park services department, which is maintaining the cleanliness, uh, sanitation, and, and also interacting with the guests um, throughout the park. There's also our parking lot, uh, attendants and cashiers. Um, if they do pass the cashier exam, which is five questions, um, then they are certified to work our cash drawers at the parking lot. Um, in addition, our retail stores, our games, and our food and beverage areas also do employ um, uh, students as young as 14. Um, if they do not pass the cashier exam, we do have other opportunities for them in food and beverage or retail and games if they don't want to do um, park services or parking lot. Um, ranging after that, we have 15-year-olds that can work in our ride attendants. So those are the folks at the top of the rides ensuring um, that the guests are safe and ready to go in their tubes or, or rafts, and then they get deployed down onto the ride. Um, lifeguards have to be 16. 
Um, so that one's a little bit higher of a requirement. And then our cooks um, as well in our food and beverage areas have to be 16. So um, there's a lot of opportunities um, if you are under 16 to get your first job here. Um, as a 14 year old, my son started here this past summer, had a wonderful experience as his first job with a lot of his friends um, and classmates and is excited to come back for the next season um, as a ride attendant because he knows he'll, he's will be 15 and can move up to that next role. Um, so it's a really great opportunity for kids um, as a first job. It's a really fun atmosphere. Um, lots of people from the community and from Long Island that they can interact with on a daily basis. It really helps their um, interaction you know, with the guests and, and obtaining those customer service skills, regardless of what area they're in. Um, being able to problem solve and, and work through, you know, any, any issues or concerns that do come up during their work shift. Um, for training purposes, uh, we offer um, a pretty intensive two-hour orientation where we go through a lot of the safety. Uh, now COVID is um, a part of that safety orientation, um, as well as just the ins and outs of the park. Um, in addition, uh, they will receive in-depth department training according to whatever department they're going to be working in. Um, cash handling training is also provided to um, everyone who's going to be working a cash drawer. Um, and then there's also sexual harassment training and, and a few other trainings involved in that. Um, for the folks that are working in our aquatics departments, they get a lot more in-depth training. Um, so all of our ride attendants and lifeguards will be CPR and first aid certified prior to starting to work. That training is compens they are compensated for that training. Um, and then that's a training that that lasts for the entire year that they can take with them after working at Splash Splash. Um, lifeguards also receive in-depth lifeguard training, which is a two day course. Uh, so very in-depth training, which is also uh, paid training. And then our ride attendants also have a ride training to be able to learn how to operate the rides and everything like that. So all of which is, is fully paid for before they start working. And Christy, you mentioned, and you just added a question to this for everybody. You mentioned um, a test for cashiers. Mm -hmm. Is there, well, how do you, uh, two questions to add to, to what you just said. How do you pre-screen candidates to decide that they're a good fit for Splish Splash and, and what kind of things are on that test, right? So what are you doing to, to really, for someone that might be a first time uh, hiring youth, how do you make the decision about whether they're a good fit, right? And, and what are your screening criteria? Um, so we go through a phone interview or an in-person interview, about 10 to 15 minutes interview for each candidate. Uh, myself, my HR supervisor, as well as our department managers before we open, will be interviewing um, all candidates for those positions, um, basically reviewing their skills, their characteristics, um, to see if they would be a good fit for that area. Um, if there is an interest in being a cashier, uh, when they come in to do their onboarding paperwork, they're given a five question paper cashier exam, basically consisting of scenarios, um, how to calculate change, uh, simple mathematics uh, problems are, are included on this, just, just to be able to assess their comfort level with dealing with um, handing out change and things like that, um, according to the problems, the simple problems that they're given on the cashier exam. If they're not, um, if they don't pass the exam, we have an answer key that we review right then and there. Um, if they don't pass that cashier exam, then we have um, just a different conversation, just advising them that, you know, unfortunately they, they didn't pass the, the exam. We'd be happy to put them in an alternative role. Um, there's plenty of other opportunities um, outside of being a cashier that, uh, that an individual could be qualified for. And we've even had some team members come to us mid season and say, you know what, I wanna try that exam again. And we're open to that. And, you know, if we can move them up to a cashier role, if they pass that, um, nine times out of 10 they do, then we can we can move them up into that cash handling role. Excellent. So uh, rolling over to Dan at YMCA, same thing, same questions. Why should, uh, why should employers consider hiring youth? What do you like about that? Um, what do you do for training? 
and the roles that you hire for. And we're going to add onboarding since Christy brought that up. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. So it's funny. So I've been uh, managing or working with youth for close to 20 years now. And I think for a lot of this, um, we often put perceptions on there that really, um, if you think about them as any other employee, things that they would want to know, right? So um, when we're hiring youth, um, we're extremely explicit in what details uh, we are asking for them in the job and then making sure that they feel like they have a good understanding of what they're getting themselves into. There's so many concepts that people have before getting into a job that if they just knew, you know, these are the hours, this is when I could be flexible, this is when I can't be flexible, that could really help them understand what your requirements are and if the job is a good match for them. Because often when a youth gets in the role, uh, and then, you know, that first week passes and they don't understand. I think that's just a really key aspect of, of what we're saying. So I find if you're explicit with youth that they're no different than the other staff, um, really, that they really just want to have the same respect that everyone else has when they're in a workplace. Um, and then um, uh, part of the reason we love working with youth, uh, especially with the why, is that they can relate so well to young people. Um, I'll give a really clear example. My daughter goes to camp at the Y. My daughter can't see herself becoming a mom or a dad or a parent in any aspect, but she can see herself growing up to be a camp counselor. And so for us, when we hire young people to work with young people, it really helps build leadership and foster this community that we're really going after. And then it also gives um, not only our, our children, but also our employees the opportunity to develop critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication. Um, when you really look at the soft skills that are needed uh, going forth in employment, um, you know, a lot of times when we're talking about young people, they're really great at communicating. And that's one of the great skills that you need to be in a workplace. So um, I think as a whole, when we look at why uh, youth, it's, it's more like, why not? I mean, the, for us, it's a, a great energy that, that people bring in. So for us, um, we have um, locations all across Long Island, uh, Bayshore, Huntington, Patchogue, Holtzville, and East Hampton for Suffolk County. Um, and for many of those buildings, we're hiring um, lifeguards, we're hiring uh, camp staff, we're hiring fitness center monitors, we're hiring facility staff. And so for us, um, uh, a number of those roles are 16, and that's put on to us by the state or the re legal requirements that are required with the role. Uh, but it's really about a, a measurement of people's uh, character and really making sure people are understanding um, who's coming into to the workplace. So for us, a lot of our interview and screening is based on character. It's based on how would you handle this type of situation? They don't have to have all the answers, but that would, they do have to know that they should go to a supervisor if they don't know the answer. Right. So, um, I think for us, uh, it's, it makes sense. Um, and then in terms of training, um, the training varies per role, um, with lifeguarding, um, we do ask that your American Red Cross. So we even run an American Red Cross class. Um, you know, uh, we have certain YMCA trainings that we put lifeguards through as well, too. Um, our, uh, all of our staff go through um, uh, child abuse and sexual harassment and other uh, required state trainings. Um, and then our camp staff in particular are really going through a number of trainings of working with children, um, close to about 30 hours of training on top of the other 10 to 15 hours I've talked about previously. But um, I think one of the nice things about uh, Gen Z is that they want to be trained um, you know, I think when you ask somebody that's a Gen X like myself, when you say staff training, you might get an eye roll. When you ask somebody that's Gen Z, they, they want to go to staff training because um, they want to learn. And I think that's one of the things that we really need to embrace is that um, the generation coming in wants to learn, wants to take on this opportunity. And they just want the same respect any other person does. Um, and I think that's just a really key aspect. And then in terms of onboarding, um, it's really making sure that they get linked up well with their supervisor. Uh, making sure that they understand explicitly um, uh, what shifts we need them for, where that flexibility might be in their schedule, and um, what things they need to really do. You know, I think a lot of times when we're hiring people in the past, you might think this is their second or third job, but what we're really seeing is that people are getting jobs a little bit later. So somebody that's coming in at 16, 17, where I, that might have been my second job or third job, um, it's really their first time ever working for somebody that outside the family, right? And so I think it's just you have to be really clear in what's going on and making sure they have a good relationship with their supervisor. If they have a great relationship with their supervisor, everything's great. It's a, it's a great relationship and uh, leads to a great workplace and leads to a good product or a good service. Um, so I think that's just really key is making sure that they understand what's expected of them and, and who they could go to when, they're, uh, when, when they have an issue. Yeah. Rosalie, you're on mute. Sorry. Thanks. 
Yeah, it's trying to not make noise over here. Thank yeah. you, Dan. Uh, Frank, your turn over at uh, Premi. So, uh, why should someone consider hiring you? What rules do you have? Um, what training and onboarding practices? Anything else you want to share with us? Great. So it was it was great to to hear uh, Dan and Christie's uh, background and kind of what they do because they're a little more of a corporate place. Uh, we started as a mom and pop restaurant. We've been here for. Uh, seven years now, actually in January. And when we first opened up, I mean, we had 25 employees and we've grown to just under 50 now. Uh, so we are uh, a little more of a mom and pop establishment and we, we hire three different positions typically for youth. Uh, first, it's, it's busboy is, is typically uh, the role that, you know, most, most of these young people are coming in for. Um, and then also for dish, uh, dishwasher and, and food prep. So those are the three major ones. And, and typically with a busboy, when they come in, we do something similar to what Chrissy does. We give them a little um, uh, a server application quiz. I mean, a busboy application quiz. They complete that and it's just to, to gauge, you know, one, if they have any experience in the hospitality industry, which nine times out of 10, this is their first job coming in here. It's their first job. They had no skills uh, prior besides possibly working with family but most of them are just going to school and uh, then eventually coming, you know, to, to apply. And most of it is they heard from a friend or one of their friends was already an employee here. And then they come in the door. Um, in the uh, kitchen staff, dishwashers, they come in and we just put them right to work. I mean, they, they, they come in, we have them train with two other guys and, and we're, you know, kind of just showing them the ropes around the restaurant, um, you know, getting them familiar with, with the area. Um, once we hire a bus boy, we pair them with a server. Uh, one of we have three training servers, so we'll pair them with a server for two weeks. And their first two weeks, they're with that individual for every one of their shifts, um, getting familiar with the restaurant and and customer service. So they're really they're they're never more than six feet away from from the server. They're kind of shadowing them. Um, and kind of learning a little more about customer service skills because most of the time, you know, we're, we're able to teach them very easily, uh, you know, how to clear a table, you know, what a table should look like, you know, what the setup for every station is, but it, customer service takes a little bit more, is, is much more challenging for us. So um, following a, a server really gives them the opportunity to, to learn all of those you know, little nuances, a, a customer has a complaint or a customer, hey, you know, they need something that's kind of outside of the peer view of, oh, can we get another order uh, or can we order another Chardonnay? Most of these kids don't know what Chardonnay is, you know, so, um, you know, what's the proper protocol for all that and just kind of figure it, yes, absolutely, I'll inform your server and then the server will go over and, and uh, get the order. Um, I started out as a bus boy when I was 14 years old and, and loved it. I was working at Nikki's on the Bay in Bayshore and they had, you know, they just hired anybody who walked in off the street. Um, and there would be, I mean, it's a 500 seat restaurant. So there would be a tremendous amount of, of kids that just, you came in, you got hired. It didn't matter what your skill set was. And they kind of just threw you into the fire. And, uh, you know, for the, for the people who want to step up to the plate and, and learn it, um, and just kind of take the bull by the horns, they're going to be extremely successful. And then there was the other ones who would just go in and kind of mope around and, and not really step up to the plate. And, and you know, you were able to distinguish who, who was going to stay there and who wasn't. You know, our goal always, the progression is always going to be, we try to drill it into the bus boys, is that, you know, you're going from bus boy right now making 20% of the server tips to, the, the, the progression would be that you're going to be a server eventually in three, four years, making three to $500 a shift. So, you know, learn the menu when you're here and it's quiet, be asking questions and, and ask your, their, your server or your supervisor, ask them as many questions as possible. Do some independent research on your own, learn about some wines or come into our server trainings. When we do that, they're opened up to busboys. If they want to show up, they could come to the server trainings. Just, you know, we do, wine training classes. We do uh, meat dry aging program classes. Uh, we have our vendors come in and sample on all of our foods and dishes from, from meat to produce, the difference between, you know, all the different ingredients. And, and they have the opportunity to come and attend those. You know, most, I'd say maybe 10% of the employees of the, of the bus boys do actually show up for it. Um, but when, when they do, you know, 
we've seen a lot of busboys become servers who have been here now seven years. They started with us when they were 15 and, you know, now they're, they've been serving for three years and they're probably not going anywhere because their servers do phenomenal. Um, so, uh, it, it, it is good. I mean, the, the one area that we need, uh, that we need a little more, uh, help with is really customer service and teaching the customer service skills. That's great. And you know what, it's, it's funny, I'm going to read off some of the questions. Um, but I, I, I love you saying like, you know, you got thrown into the fire, right? So when you talk about skill building, um, I got, you know, sworn in at, at the Suffolk County Department of Labor as first com female commissioner two days before the pandemic, right? Oh. There was no, there was no prep class for pandemics. <laughs> and, yeah. and I have 170 employees I'd never met before, right? Hi, welcome, bye, go home, right? We have a pandemic. So I think I'll reiterate where I started the conversation. Um, the skills you learn in youth employment are exactly the skills you, you're going to need your whole entire life, right? Like, sure. great, um, nice. I, ca I called the county executive and said, thanks for the job. Also, fun onboarding process you have here, right? Like, uh, yeah, so, onboarding process basically after. Right. And so this is, this is what happens. And so I think these are good skills. Before we take some of the questions, I'm just going to recap what I heard is some of the best practices. So I heard some effort up in the beginning making sure that the job descriptions and expectations are clear so that the right people are applying for those jobs. Um, also that there's good screening in place during those interviews. I did wanna ask Dan, and, and um, I know that Swiss West, they do phone interviews and, and in person. Dan and Frank, do you do phone and in person as well and Zoom or are you doing just in person? Just in person for us. Yeah, we should usually get them in the door. Okay. Yep. Um, we do phone and um, we do all three, um, okay. uh, but um, uh, um, we have employees come pretty early on in the process to fill out paperwork as well, too. So that's great. And then I hear training, right? General training and specific area training is what I heard was consistent. Um, and I also I, I think uh, one of the things that you two other things I heard were um, a really good relationship, like making sure there's time spent building relationships with supervisors and the ability to say, hey, you may not be a good fit for this role, but there's something else for you or prepping for future roles. So those are some of the common things I heard. So questions I had were, what are some of the challenges that are unique to hiring youth? Is there an issue with maturity, awkwardness, or reliability were some of the questions. So anyone who wants to take those, you guys can take them in order and, um, and we can move from there. Sure. I mean, I, I would jump right in and, you know, sometimes there, there definitely are those instances of lack of professionalism, um, you know, employees standing around and, you know, who, who's, you know, pulling on somebody else's tie and just like kind of horse playing around the restaurant. Um, they, they don't, uh, some of our employees, and we do find that, that there is a lack of professionalism. And then also, like I said earlier, it's really, you know, the lack of customer service skills and the, the interpersonal skills, being able to deal with to guess those are some of the biggest challenges that, that I've seen here um, at the restaurant. Yeah, I have to agree with Frank. I mean, just, just getting them used to interacting with the guests, having that comfort level. Um, you know, we, we are incorporating some additional training uh, for, for dealing with guests uh, this year, just to make things run a little bit more smoothly, but just like, you know, lack of experience and one of my you know, main goals throughout the season is to be out in the park, um, you know, really touching base with them, trying to get a pulse for how things are going. Do they have any questions, any, any concerns that they want to address? They may not think to come into the office and speak to me, but at least if I'm at the park sort of in their face, you know, checking in with them, um, you know, they can voice any, any concerns or hesitations that they have, but um, definitely the, you know, interacting with the guests and, and having that, um, having that knowledge and that sense of empowerment to be able to, to guide, you know, a guest in the right direction is, is sometimes challenging. Yeah. And um, uh, just to play off that too, you know, I think if you think about this generation, they, they're all digital natives, right? They've all been growing up with technology and they're all used to communicating via text and um, uh, getting them to have the social skills or develop the social skills to interact with people. Sometimes it's, it's really, um, pushing them. Um, and I think you have to really recognize 
that that is the world they've grown up in. It's much different than the world we all grew up in on this call. And that it doesn't mean we give up on them. We just have to help and foster that. So I think that is really just a huge aspect of what we're doing is encouraging them to, uh, to be open, encouraging them to be forthcoming. Um, it's not that they don't want to be forthcoming. It's that they're just so used to doing it through a device. And I think that's great. And, and as we started in the beginning seeing um, for any employers, either on the panel or on the, on the Zoom, we will um, we can create a youth training around the specific needs. So it sounds like you know that sort of going from digital to human interaction and, and customer service. We can work with you to develop that and incorporate it um, and do it with the school districts during the year, so that by the time summer employment comes around or whatever's next, we can make sure they're ready to go for you. So if I'm looking, there's no more questions that I can see. Um, I'm checking. Since I don't have questions at the moment, we could move on to Department of Labor. Yeah, Robin and Angela, if you wanna hop in here and talk a little bit about the youth employment laws and overview. And then obviously this is recorded. We'll send a link to anyone who's on the group that wants to talk it over. And then after that, we'll talk to BOCES about trading. Good morning, thank you, Rosalie. This is, uh, my name is Robin Falrath. I'm the Director of Downstate Labor Affairs for New York State. I wanna start off by thanking Suffolk County Department of Labor and Commissioner Drago for hosting this today. Um, and I wanna thank all the businesses, Frank, Dan, and Christy um, for providing your insight on hiring and your success stories about employing youth. Um, so thank you for being here today and thank you to all the participants who are joining us now and those who will be watching the recording later on. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to introduce um, Angela Dean. She's going to be providing our presentation today. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm going to talk briefly um, regarding the child labor laws of New York State. Um, there are three, and I hope you all can see my screen that I'm sharing. I think I got it together. There are three age categories of child labor in New York State. Oops, Different degrees of restrictiveness for minors under 14 years of age. There are minors 14 and 15 years of age and minors 16 and 17 years of age. Minors under 14 are generally prohibited from working. There are exceptions um, when school attendance is not required. Minors who are at least 11 years old may deliver newspapers, magazines, and penny savers to to homes and business places. Some of it is cut off. Minors who are at least 12 years old may assist in the hand harvest of berries, fruits, vegetables. If they're accompanied by, or if they've been presented to the employer, or if they've presented to the employer the written consent of their parent or guardian. Minors who are at least 12 years of age may be employed by their parents on their home farm or other outdoor work, not connected with any business enterprise. Minors who are at least 12 years of age may assist a family member in selling farm products, produce from their family farm at the family farm stand or farmer's market stand if the minors are accompanied by or if they have the written consent of their parent or guardian. Minors who are at least 12 years of age may be employed as bridge caddies at bridge tournaments. Special provisions are made for child performers and child models. Minus, minus 14 and 15 years of age may be employed except in factories when school attendance is required and in specified prohibited occupations and industries. Minus 14 and 15 years old generally need an employment certificate or working papers except for golf caddies, bridge caddies at bridge tournaments, babysitters, casual yard work and household chores at for residents or for a nonprofit organization where the operation of power machinery is not involved, work on the miners' home family farm or at other outdoor work not connected with any business enterprise, work assisting a family member in selling produce from the family farm at the family farm stand or farmer's market stand if the miner is accompanied, is accompanied by or if he or she has the written consent of the parent or guardian. Minors 16 and 17 years old may be employed in factories as well as in any other non-prohibited agency, occupational industry, except 
when full attendance is required and specify prohibited occupations and industries. Minors 16 and 17 years old generally require working certificates, except for occupations for which exception has been made to the requirement to in obtain an employment certificate for minors 14 and 15 years old, farm service, casual yard work and household chores at a residence or for a nonprofit organization where only the operation of power-driven machinery ordinarily used in such yard work or household chores is involved, employment of students by the nonprofit college or university which they attend, or by its fraternity, sorority, student association, or faculty association. Prohibited occupations for minors under age 16. This is something that is particularly important for you know, some of the people that we have present today. Minors under age 16 are prohibited from painting or exterior cleaning in connection with the maintenance of a building or structure. The operation of washing, grinding, cutting, slicing, pressing, or mixing machinery. Employment in institutions of the Department of Mental Hygiene, except that minors at least 14 years old may participate in recreation and recreational activities as part of an organized volunteer program, work in a factory. All of the above activities are forbidden to minors under 16 years of age. Additional prohibited occupations for minors under 16 years old, they may not maintain or operate any kind of elevator. They may not clean the exterior of or paint a building, whether from ground level or from an elevated surface. Minors who are 16 or 17 years old may not maintain an elevator, maintain or operate an elevator that is not automatic push button nor may they clean the exterior of or paint a building from an elevated surface. So you can see pretty much that the prohibited occupations for minors under 16 and 16 and 17 are relatively similar. Prohibited occupations for minors of any age. Minors of any age may not engage in any occupation involving the operation of power-driven hoisting apparatus, clean oil or white machinery or adjust machine belts, be involved with the custody or care of prisoners in penal institutions, serve as a helper on a motor vehicle. Specified occupations and activities including, including hazardous materials, equipment, industries are forbidden to minors of any age. Minors of any age are prohibited from handling any or uh, materials, explosives, acids, lead, paint, silica, radioactive substances. So they cannot be engaged in occupations involving those types of uh, substances. Uh, minors of any age cannot handle equipment, abrasive polishing or buffing wheels, steam boilers, power-driven woodworking, metalworking, baking, and paper product machines, saws, shears, and mills. And These are occupations that are also prohibited um, and forbidden to minors of any age. Minors of any age may not participate in or be engaged in construction, demolition, roofing, excavation, logging, mining, meat packing, and slaughtering, brick and tile manufacture. These are occupations that are forbidden to minors of any age. Minors' hours of work, there are restrictions on the number of hours a day, the number of days in a week, how early or how late they can work. Factors include their age category, whether school is in session or not in session, a minor's academic standing, and parental consent. This screen shows a chart of the hours that different categories of minors can work when school is in session versus when school is not in session. Minors age 14 and 15 when attending school and when school is not in session. All occupations except farm work, they can work three hours on school days, eight hours on other days. They can work a maximum of 18 hours a week. They can work a maximum of six days. They can work 
between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Minors age 16 and 17 can work 28 hours, six days, from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. There are some exceptions here. They're listed down at the bottom of the screen. Um, they involve having parental consent in some cases, and in other cases, they also involve having consent from the school to work at 10 p.m. or after 10 p.m. Um, when school is not in session, minors 14 and 15 can work eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, six days, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. When school is in session, or not in session rather, is um, considered between June 21st to Labor Day. Minors age 16 and 17, in all occupations except farm work, newspaper carrier, and street trades can work eight hours a day, 48 hours a week, six, out, six days a week from 6 a.m. to midnight. And minors who are not attending school age 16 and 17 can work up to eight hours a day, 48 hours a week, six days a week from 6 a.m. to midnight. Um, farm work age 12 and 13 can work four hours. And this is just when school is not in session. June 21st to Labor Day, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And ages 14 through 18 can work at any farm work from the day after Labor Day to June 20th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Newspaper carriers ages 11 to 18 can work four hours on school days, five hours on other days from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 30 minutes prior to sunset, whichever is later. And street trade, street trade, um, minors ages 14 to 18 can work four hours on school days, five hours on other days from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. And again, this is information that is available on the Department of Labor website. One, this is a very, very, very important aspect of child labor, one that when we are investigating, we do find often violations. And this is the requirement to have an employment certificate on file. Okay, employment certificates are obtained by application from the local school or district administrative office with written permission from a parent or guardian. There are exceptions for emancipated minors. Um, proof of age, a certificate of physical fitness to assure that the minor is able to work. The New York State Department of Labor issues permits for performers and models. Um, the following slides just give you a basic overview of what the permits look like, valid permits look like. These are things that employers should be collecting upon hiring of the minor. They are to be kept at the premises while the minor is employed. And at the termination of employment, the original employment certificate should be returned to the minor. But for purposes, protective purposes for the employer, I suggest we recommend that employers keep a copy of that working permit on file, just in case something arises after the minor is no longer working there, maybe the minor has been injured on the job. And it goes to a workers' comp proceeding, something like that, and workers' comp notifies the Department of Labor that, hey, there's a possible uh, problem of legal employment of minors. And one thing we want to know, the first thing we want to know, was the minor lawfully employed? Did the minor have a working certificate at the time he was employed? So just to keep that in mind. Again, this is an image of a farm work permit. This is an image of a news carrier, newspaper carrier permit. This is an in, image of a non-factory employment certificate for 14 years old. These are the most common working papers you're going to encounter for 14 to 15 years old. Green for 16 and 17 years old. Make sure if you have employers, make sure that Maybe you're hiring an employee who may be 14 or 15. They're just on that threshold of turning to the next category of age. Make sure that they get the next appropriate working paper permit on file. Because if we were to go in and say, show us your working papers for all your minors and you have the wrong one, it could be a violation issue. There is also a salmon colored employment certificate for 16 and 17 years old year old, this is an image of it, and a limited employment certificate. What this is. we have not seen this before, but it does exist. Employment restrictions for minors under 18 years old. 
include the number of total weekly hours worked. I touched on that already. The number of total days worked per week, start times and stop times of work shifts, number of total hours worked per day, types of duties, types of occupations, no exceptions to restrictions, even if minor is a relative. So even if you're working in the family restaurant and that child is a minor, mom and dad, you have to have an employment certificate for that minor. And no employees, no minors under 18, they work without an employment certificate. Um, the impact of COVID-19, all rules for minors still apply. School is in session even if learning is remote. And one of the Department of Labor's top priorities is keeping children, minors, safe in the workplace. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. We have an information booklet available for public. Of course, you can go online. This is the website address. And you can also call for additional information. We are always happy to answer questions regarding child labor. We would prefer for employers to reach out and become knowledgeable before that violation should occur. Thank you so much, Angela. And before, I really appreciate it. And it's a lot of information. We will, this is being recorded and we'll post it and send it to the folks that uh, attended today and it's shareable. Um, before we go on to BOCES, I just was checking uh, some of our questions that we had in the chat. Um, and we, those were that about sending out presentations, so we'll do that. I did get a request uh, separately about could we host another session specifically for industries, which we could certainly look at doing if we want to do that as well. And so I'll turn it over to our friends Carol and Ray at BOCES, and you can talk a little bit about the programs you have, the prep you do, and how you work with students to get them ready for work. Good morning. Go ahead, Carol, take it away. <laughs> it is first. <clears throat> Thank you, Ray. Good morning. I'm Carol Donahue. I'm the Work Experience Coordinator for Eastern Suffolk BOCES um, in the Millican Technical Center. We're located in Bohemia. Uh, we've been working with the Department of Labor um, for as long as I can recall. Um, I've only been in this position for a short time, but um, my the person I took over for has been working uh, with you guys uh, with the Department of Labor for a while. One of the things that we do um, is uh, we expose, uh, we have a program through um, the youth program that we expose the students to the value of um, being um, hired uh, and getting them employability skills. That seems to be the common theme today that you know the students need more of those soft skills, those transferable skills. And what happens is we um, co-op them. So it kind of starts like an internship and then into a co-op or vice versa. It could just be a co-op where, you know, it takes the pressure off the employers and um, the Department of Labor will take um, and pay them and allow the students to get some, gain some of those employability skills. Um, so the pay factor is taken away from the employers. Um, and then the students also gain a lot of experience. Um, it kind of makes them feel that they're part of um, the company, knowing that the expectation is that they should work, um, gain those skills, that they should show up on time, all the things that we've, we've spoken about, um, and gain employment through that company eventually. So um, it's been very successful. We have 11th and 12th graders in this building, and um, we have uh, various programs that we co-op students in HVAC and culinary. Um, we have some students out in um, child care facilities. Uh, so it, the, the, the range is broad and, um, and it's very successful. And we actually kind of uh, see the light bulb go off in the kids, which is what we want. We want to see that, you know, uh, those skills come to life, so to speak, and also uh, to gain that confidence that they need. So. That's my uh, my experience. Uh, Ray, do you want to add anything to that? Sure. I mean, we're basically a resource for the community. Uh, we have students who are in training programs for things they like, automotive technology, culinary arts, cosmetology, animal science, uh, audio production, law enforcement, uh, nursing. So we offer a lot of programs to our 
districts who send to us, and then we are you know a great resource for the community. So, for instance, Swish Splash, if they're looking to uh, you know contact with a bunch of students who are going to be interested in jobs, we would be a great resource to contact because we have those resources on on site. Um, our classes are exploratory programs, so to say. So a student might come to us for an interest in automotive technology. It doesn't mean that every student is going to be a auto mechanic and go into the industry, but a great majority of our students do. Some students just want to learn a, a skill, perhaps you know how to cook at home just to make dinner for their families, and others have a great passion to continue that education into a you know restaurant career, so to say. So we are a great resource for you know possible employees. So, you know, we'd love guys to reach out for us, reach out to us, and, um, you know, we can help you out and serve as a pipeline from school to business. And Carol and I do uh, actually are the contacts for the school. So if you contact us, um, you know, we can definitely help you out. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like I'm thinking about their culinary kits and Frank's place and Dan, even our, you know, um, child care students to go into, you know, the YMCA. But again, some of our students do hold lifeguard licenses. They do other things, as Ray mentioned. Some of them are just exploratory. So they can use, sometimes the, the resume has more than what we uh, than what we see. You know, that CPR certification may help a kid in culinary just get a job at Splash Splash, you know, or in dance um, location. So we're and here as a resource, reach out. Every building in BOCES has a work experience coordinator. So there's a total of four of us in each building. Ray and I happen to have um, programs that kind of mirror each other because we're trying to um, provide services to both ends of the island. So he's more out east in Riverhead and I'm more centrally located, but we also have a campus in Belport. And then we also have our um, uh, special education uh, population, which is in the building right next to us. So we have tons of students that are available and willing to work. Um, they just need those skills as Rosalie keeps saying to get that experience, to get that exposure. You know, our classrooms mimic, um, you know, what is supposed to happen in a restaurant in a childcare setting. We have our own childcare facility, but it's the best experience by far is getting out into the field and really practicing those skills. And the nice thing about working with our programs too, is that you also have the support of the school. So if you did want to, you know, have a need for, let's say for an employee, uh, we can put a student into an internship program with school support. So it's almost like the village raising the child where you have support at the school and we have your support in industry and we can help train that child to become a better employee. Uh, we only put out students who are ready to go into internships. So even though we might have 500 students on campus, if I have an industry, let's say Frank came to me and said, listen, I have a need, I'm opening up a restaurant in Riverhead and I need employees. Well, that's great. So what I would do is I would go to my culinary arts uh, instructor, and I would ask who, you know, who would be interested, who would be a good fit, uh, just because I might have 50 to 60 students in that class during the course of the day, doesn't mean that I'm going to stick a you know, business owner with kids who are not ready to go out and not mature enough to go out. Those students who go into internships have to meet a certain criteria through the instructor and through myself and Carol and the, and the coordinators, because we do not want to put any student into an internship program that has the potential to really destroy <laughs> the relationship that we are trying to build with the community. Um, so, and if that is the case where we do put out a student and it might happen one to 2% of the time um, where the student is just not maybe showing up on time or has an attitude, we would try to rectify that situation in the field with the uh, owner of the, of the business. And if that's something we couldn't rectify, we would pull a student out of the internship. So <clears throat> there's no uh, long-term commitment for that. If that does happen, we would just you know, end it at that point. And perhaps if we had somebody else, we'd try to put somebody else in that position. Uh, there are times, unfortunately, where I just don't have you know, a right fit, so to say, for somebody for a restaurant. So I might have a student who is very interested in working for Frank's New River, a Riverhead Restaurant, and then we, we want to work there, and they come to our school, but maybe they live out in Montauk, and it's just not feasible for them to get to Riverhead you know, on the weekends, they're only here during the week. Uh, we can put students out in internships on school time as well, which also gives them a little bit of experience. Uh, so it's nice to a couple of days a week, we can release a student 
usually it's like two and a half hours a day, twice a day, twice a week. So you're looking at maybe five hours a week where we can start to maybe have that connection uh, build with our business partner who did the hiring. And, um, you know, maybe you can turn it into once things can work out, the logistics can be taken care of. Maybe a student saving up for a car and has a car. And now they can make that trip from Montauk to Riverhead if they really wanted to do that. So, um, you know, we're a, great, we're a great resource for future employees. Um, if, if you guys, sorry. See, Frank, they really want you to open a restaurant. No, no, they, they yes, Frank, I want to have that wine tasting with you too. So yes. next, next, next meeting, <laughs> the next meeting, we all meet at your restaurant. Ray and Carol, can you put your, your information in the chat because we're getting sure. questions about your company. I want to sure. also add, um, Part, BOCES has been a great partner in terms of being flexible, right? So we talked about all the programs you have. We just recently, um, you know, they had a barbering program and we had a local employer um, in Wine Dance that wanted to take on some interns. So, you know, they can customize a program, right? If they need to make a shorter program to meet your needs to get somebody ready in, in four weeks or three weeks for a holiday season. Um, I do like the idea about having a student come before you need them um, and doing two hour internships, um, depending on, especially with low income youth, we can help pay for some of those internships. It's a good way to make sure that they're building the skills before you need them. So, um, you know, let us know if that's a way we can help. So we don't, I don't think I see any other questions in the chat other than the ones that we've talked about. Um, yeah, BOCES, uh, BOCES numbers in high demand there. Um, so let me know. Um, you could always send us questions if you don't, if you didn't think of them while you were on the call, we will send everyone a copy of the presentation. Uh, last call for questions. Oh no, see one went up there. Um, oh, the question was, does the labor department support students volunteering for events? So we have funding to provide paid work experience and training for work experience for low income youth as well as in specific zip codes. So we can share that. Um, anyone who's interested, you have Diane and Michelle's con con uh, contact information can reach out to us and we can connect you. Thank you to everyone uh, for participating today. Really, really appreciate your help. And uh, we will do us. a follow-up one. So Thank you for having us. This was so informative and we look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Carol, I'm texting you. <laughs> See? Right away. Right away. Your students are. We're wasting no time. We're wasting no time. That's good. Great. Thanks. We look forward to visiting your location, Ray and I. Oh, absolutely. Anytime you now you have my number. So it, it looks so cozy. <laughs> it's, great. It's, it's warm. Right around the holidays, too. We West Eye West I Slip. <laughs> West I Slip. Right off the highway. So it's nice and easy. So close. We got you. Thanks, ya. guys. <laughs> Coming Thanks, soon guys. to Riverhead. Coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.